everyone, it's that time again that we get to spend on another episode of Real Life Discussion with Pastor Rodney Evans. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Get you a pen, get you something to drink, get your Bible, because I want to make sure that you and I are looking at the scriptures together. Go ahead and turn your Bibles to Mark chapter 11, verse 22. We're going to read 22 and uh, through 24. Uh, as you're doing that, I want everybody at Real Life to know that we love you. We thank God for you. If you want to know anything about our church, there's two locations you can go. You can give it both if you'd like. The first one is our website. It's reallifeconcord.com, reallifeconcord.com. Then we have our church's Facebook page. At our church's Facebook page, you'll find the YouTube videos. You will find the podcast, and that is at Real Life Concord. If you're there on Facebook, go ahead and like the church's Facebook page. And if you want to know anything about our personal ministry right now, we take no salary from that. The money that comes in is used for ministry and also to help ministers. And through your giving, we have been able to do those couple of things. Uh, that is at RodneyEvansMinistries.org, RodneyEvansMinistries.org. Uh, over there, you'll find the uh, YouTube channel and also the podcast. So go check those places out. We'd appreciate it so much. In Mark chapter 11, verse 22 says, And Jesus answered and said to them, Have faith in God. One translation says, Have the God kind of faith, which is more in line of what the interpretation of that is, really. Verse 23 says, For surely I say to you, Whosoever say to this mountain, Be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that these things he saith will be done, he will have whatsoever he saith. So you gotta believe what you're saying, not just say. Verse 24 says, Therefore I say to you, whatsoever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. Again, that's written in red. That's Jesus talking, so that is not someone else. So as you look that, he said, if you believe it and you say it, you can have it. So I just want to encourage you to make sure that you are feeding yourself the Word of God. So as you get the Word of God in, in your life and you believe what the Word says, you'll begin to speak the Word and you'll begin to see God move supernaturally for you. Now, we are not going to go back and, and go over things we went over the last two weeks. So again, go over and listen to the last two episodes. We're going to pick up kind of where we just dropped off. And that is Romans chapter 10, verse 17. In that it says, So then faith come by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. See, faith begins where the will of God is known. And so the only way for me to know the will of God is to know his word. So I've got to take logos and make it rain. I've got to take the written word of God and make it alive to me. So the only way it can become alive to me is if I read it, get it in me, get it in my heart, and then as I begin to speak it, I'll begin to see it manifest, just like it was when you got saved. The Message Bible says it this way, is anyone listening and believing a word of it? The point is, before you trust, you have to listen. But unless Christ's word is preached, there's nothing to listen to. We've got to make sure that we are listening to the Word of God. See, you're listening to the Word of God right now because I'm, I'm speaking the Word. I'm sharing what the Word says right now to you. And by sharing that Word to you, you are building your faith up. So you can listen to videos uh, of people ministering. You can read the Word yourself. And as you do that, your faith is increasing. There's some things you need to understand. Number one is the Word of God is the Word of faith. Pastor, I want, my, I want my faith to grow. Well, get in the Word because more words you hear from the Word of God, more your faith will grow. Second, the Word of God sustains everything. Everything is held right now in this universe above us, the stars, because Jesus said. And because He said everything else, and we've shared those scriptures with you for the last couple of weeks, I'm not going to go back. The Word of God is alive. See, as you read the word, again, as it goes, as it's written here, it's locos, but as I get it in me, it becomes rhema. It becomes alive because now I've activated it. And then when I begin to speak it, I'm activating my faith. And as I begin to speak it because I believe it, not just because 
I'm saying something is because I've had it in my heart and I begin to declare it. Then I begin to see God move supernaturally because the Word of God is alive. For God's Word accomplishes the needed results. How many times, I know I have, I know my family has, we've needed God to move in certain things and we would, we would get in the Word, we would find a scripture, we would find what the Word says about that situation and we would begin to declare it and we would begin to see that result begin to, to manifest what the Word says over that circumstances because we declared what the Word says instead of the situation. Number five, God's Word can be trusted. There's some things you can't trust, but one thing you and I as believers can, we can trust the Word of God. It is the Word of God that the Holy Spirit uses to awaken a response of faith within us. How many times have you said and have you, uh, you know, began to get into the Word and all at once something rises up and you get excited? What's happened? The Holy Spirit has allowed that time that you have spent in the Word to awaken a response of faith. I can now obtain it because the Word says it. There's many people that has been prayed for for healing or other things and they get in the Word and begin to see it and all at once they rise up because it has awakened a response of faith in them. I wanna encourage you with all that's going on around us, we need to be in the Word of God because right now that's exactly what we need to be doing is in the Word, allowing faith to rise up on the inside of us. So when the devil comes against us, we can say, no, it's written. It says this in the Word. I can declare this because I have it on the inside of me. And when I declare it, I believe it. Because one thing I know I can always trust and believe is what the Word says. In uh, Deuteronomy 28, now I wanna read this, look over this just a few moments. I'm not gonna go over everything or read it all. It's talking about blessings and cursing. Um, but I wanna stress this, you're under grace. But what I wanna talk about for a few moments is God always requires obedience before he moves. We got to obey. You know, Jesus began to deal with you about salvation and through obedience, you begin to confess that Jesus died on the cross and that's how you received him as your personal savior because you obeyed, you ask him to forgive you. And he is, he's a loving God and he did. The same thing's true with other things in your life. But again, this is the law, but we're under grace and mercy according to the New Testament. But I wanna use this to show you that the Bible says this in Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 1 says now it came to pass if you diligently that means with a steady application and with care not careless not neglecting obey the voice of the Lord your God you've got to obey his voice one what one thing is his voice is his word people say I wish I could hear the voice of God well God's word is his voice but also he can speak to you. You get that on the inside. You can, you know, you know, my, the Bible says, my sheep know my voice. You know that. But then it goes on and says this, obey the voice of the Lord your God to observe carefully all of his commandment, which I've commanded you today, that the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations of the earth. And above, um, then it goes on and says, and all these blessings shall uh, come upon you and overtake you. All of these blessings you're blessed. The word blessed there means happy, prosperous, in worldly affairs, enjoying the spiritual happiness and the favor of God, enjoying heavenly, I love that, heavenly happiness or great happiness, the joy of heaven, prosperity, the blessings or enjoyment of good. He says, if you'll just obey me, I'm going to bless you. Why does God want to bless his people? So people will see there's a God again in heaven. In Deuteronomy chapter uh, 26, verse 19 says this, and that he who set you high above all the nations which he has made in praise, that means glory or celebration, in name, that means character and authority, 
and in honor, glory, glorious or glory, and that you may be holy people to the Lord your God, just as he has spoken to you. One translation says, for fame and honor. Jesus wants to, to use you to show people that he is still king. He wants to use us, the people. It goes through here, it talks about blessing. In verse eight, it says, and the Lord will command, that means to order, mandate uttered. It means order given. In other words, it says this, the Lord will give an, uh, an order, the blessings on you. And it goes on, it says, in your storehouse and etc. Your God is a God of blessing. He's not looking to slap you down. He's looking to bless you. I don't know about you, but that's a good thing. But here he says, if you obey, if God is speaking for you to do something, you haven't done it, you know, then you're asking God to move. For instance, and I've used this analogy before, if God has told you to do something for your neighbor and you don't do it, uh, why? If he's told you, well, maybe they don't, you'll say in your mind, they don't need it. But maybe it's to see if you're obedient. Isn't that good? See, Isaiah 1 and 19 says this, if you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. Obedient means submissive to authority or yielding right away to him. See, I want to submit myself to God. I want him to have right away to use me. So that means I've got to be willing and I've got to be obedient. So we both have to be willing and we've got to be obedient. In uh, 1 Chronicles chapter 14, verse two says this. So David knew that the Lord had established him as king over Israel and his kingdom was highly exalted for the sake of of his people, Israel. Exalted means elevated, honored with, with office or rank. God wants to elevate you. God wants people in the neighborhood to see, hey, that's a servant of God. They're walking in obedience to me. And they've got faith in my word. And if they've got faith in my word, I'm gonna move for them. Your God's a good, good God. Quit letting people tell you that he is not. See. You and I are the deciding factor in this thing. God wants to move, but are we willing and obedient? Are we listening? Give me some scripture on that, Pastor. Let me, let me just share a couple of instances here. Noah built the ark, God flooded the earth. Moses stretched out the rod, God parted the sea. Joshua marched around Jericho, God brought the walls down. Elijah smote the waters, God parted the river. Elisha threw the stick in the river. God made the iron swim. See, they were obedient, and through their obedience, God did something. A lot of times, God's waiting for us just to be willing and obedient. So I want to encourage you to have faith in God, but also as you got faith in God, you gotta be willing and obedient to obey Him. See, faith should give birth to faithfulness works it's now it is time to walk by faith into the uncharted waters i'm gonna read it again faith should give birth to faithful works now it's time to walk by faith into uncharted waters it's hard telling what i'm saying there is it's hard telling where god will take you it's hard telling what god will do for you see action is as important to faith as the wind is to the sail of the ship. Every great accomplishment is a result of faith. Listen, the people I just read to you and mentioned to you, they would not have experienced what they experienced if they weren't willing to do their part. Again, I, I wanna go over that again. I want you to see that. Noah built the ark. What would happen if he hadn't built the ark? No built the ark, God flooded the earth. Moses stretched out the rod, God parted the sea. Some of you are waiting for God to move in your life. He says, I've told you to do this. I want to encourage you to do what God's called you to do. I'm not going to go through the rest of that, but I want to encourage you. If you're going to walk by faith, you've got to be willing to be obedient to what he is speaking. See, 
Most faith walk, walks begin in darkness. It, it might look bad. And you've heard this before, fear, false evidence appearing real. Some things look real, but it's not. Some things look a certain way, and they're not. You know how many times have you sat and you have walked in fear? And whatever you walk in in fear never happens. It's just a way to bring fear into your life. Uh, in 2 Kings, let's look there very quickly. 2 Kings. In 2 Kings, you, you know this story. Elisha and the widow's oil. So I'm not going to read the whole thing. But, you know, Elisha showed up. He begins to speak to the woman. She begins to share with him all of what's going to happen, that her kids are going to be sold, sold into slavery if she can't pay her bills. And then Elisha says this in verse 3. Then he said, Go borrow vessels from everywhere, from all your neighbors. Empty vessels do not gather just a few. Now, he's telling them to, gar, to borrow a lot. See, the word is here, borrow not a few. He told her to go borrow a lot. See, the oil stopped when she ran out of the vessels. If you are satisfied with little, that's what you'll end up with. You and I don't need to be satisfied. We always need to have more of Jesus and more of the promises of the word in our life. And it t says that she went and borrowed. Then in verse 7 it says, and it says she filled them until they were all filled up. And verse 7 says, then he came and told, she came and told the man of God. He said, go sell the oil and pay your debt. You and your sons live on the rest. So it shows that she had plenty to come in to pay her bills and had a lot left over to, to, to live on. Listen, if that word was spoken to you and me today, how many will we borrow? We would just go to a couple. But here it says she went and borrowed and she filled those vessels. So she had to have faith in what the man of God spoke. And as she had faith in what the man of God spoke at that time, those vessels began to be filled. And she had so much again that she could pay off her debt. And again, the man of God says, your sons, you and your sons uh, live on the rest of it. Isn't that awesome? That God manifested this back then in the Bible again. We shared this last week. Um, you live under a better covenant, established on better promises. See, how far you will go with God is up to you and your faith walk. You can get to heaven by just asking Jesus into your life. But is that where you want to stop? I want to make sure that you and I are walking in all the promises that God has promised us. That don't mean, I want to stress this, that don't mean you're not going to go through things. That don't mean that you are not going to be tested. But what it means is you can have faith in God to get you through it. See, faith is a believing. Mark Twain said this. I like this. Faith is believing what you know ain't. At least not yet. I added that. Say it again. Faith is believing what you know ain't. At least not yet. Again, I added that last part. Another person said it this way. When you walk to the edge of all the light we have and take that step into darkness of the unknown, we must believe that the one of two things will happen. One of two things will happen. There'll be something solid for us to stand on or God will teach us to fly. One or two things when, you, when you're walking in the uncharted territory, here, the man is saying, when you walk into an area and it's dark, you've got to believe two things. Either there'll be something to stand on or God will teach us quickly how to fly. 
Isn't that awesome? Listen, I want your and my faith to grow. I want it to increase. And it can today. You've got to begin. Faith comes by hearing, hearing, and hearing, and hearing the Word of God. You will never see the uh, bridges, much less walk across them, until you have the faith and courage to embark upon the faith walk. Read that one more time. But you will never see bridges, much less walk across them until you have the faith and courage to embark upon the faith walk. A walk of faith is a journey that has the ability to rocket every aspect of your expectation into whole new realms. Faith is your connection with God. My faith connects me with God. That's how I got saved. Listen, I'm going to stop there. We're going to pick this up next week. I love you. I want you to know, and I'm going to pray for you in a few moments. Let me pray for you right now. Heavenly Father, as I come into your presence, I pray for every single person who's listening to this YouTube video today. I pray that you touch them, that you minister them, that you, Father, encourage their faith to begin to soar. I, Lord, encourage them to begin to listen and to listen and to listen and to listen to what the Word of God is saying. So their faith will increase because, Father, as we share with them today, faith come by hearing and hearing and hearing the Word of God. Father, do supernatural things in their body today. Heal them, bless them, move supernaturally into them, Father. Father, I declare that today in the name of Jesus. Isn't it awesome that God loves you that much? Listen, if you're lost and you've listened to this, all you've got to do is ask Jesus into your life. You've just got to declare, Father, I'm a sinner. I believe that Jesus died on the cross. I believe he rose the third day. And I'm asking him right now to become Lord of my life. I ask him in the name of Jesus to forgive me of all of my sins. And I accept him as a Lord and personal Savior. It's that easy. You can do that today. Until next week, we pray that God's best be yours, spirit, soul, and body. And we love you, and we appreciate you.